thank you very much for inviting me to speak. I'm chair of Basingstoke Cultural Forum, so I, I've worked, I lived in Basingstoke for well over 20 years and worked with most of the cultural organisations. I'm now freelance, but the Cultural Forum is a voluntary organisation of pro cultural providers that meet from with one person organizations providing Asian dance up to anvil arts and everything in between. So it's quite a range and libraries, museums, all cultural provision comes in there. Sorry, Discovery Center. Um, as, a, as a forum, we, we naturally welcome consultation on the new commissioning process and being part of modeling that. that was a, it was great to be invited to be part of that so that we could offer our expertise, prof professional and voluntary organizations. Voluntary organizations are often one, run by one to five professionals in this context who are specialists in their area. We welcome the workshop approach as well. Um, and as the portfolio holds pointed out, uh, there were some teething problems. We felt that it was more what well, is described as and as a bit more of a touchstone rather than a full consultation process because of the time constraints and the limited time there was to discuss in each, in each session. We estimate that the main funded organizations that were involved in this gave one to two days per month to this out of their professional time because in terms of reading the papers, preparing, coming to a half-day COG and then feeding back afterwards and consultations in between, it took quite a lot of time. Prepared to do that, obviously, and keen to offer that, but felt that we were being called upon for quite a lot of expertise in quite a constrained way. Um, some of the challenges are, were and are, but there are really complex issues. And as you'll appreciate, cultural organizations are cross-cutting. And I notice you've got homelessness here. Well, Paul, who's, who's here with me, runs Drum Runners, works with homeless people. Protest Theatre Company, many of you know, has worked with victims of domestic violence and so on. I'm sure you could all give examples of where culture impacts on lives. And we were given lists and lists of things to deal with at every meeting in short 15 to 20 minute sections and asked for detailed feedback and ideas on them and felt a little frustrated that we couldn't, didn't have time to offer creative ideas or to discuss them or to enter into that discursive way of how things could work. Um, there's a lot of talk about outcomes and outputs and in your papers I notice it says things are ma mainly measured by outputs. I don't think that's true. A lot of funded organizations, as you'll see if you read annual returns for some years, have highlighted outcomes as well as outputs as a result of Basingstoke and Dean's support in the past because as cultural organizations, we believe that our work is transformative. It's not about bean counting. It is important that numbers are affected, of course, but we want to measure quality of life and that's part of what we do for Basingstoke and Dean. So we feel that some of the information that is to hand at Basingstoke and Dean was not brought into the COG process. It's there and given year after year, but it didn't inform it in the way we had hoped it would. Um, the, the limited space for innovation ideas, we're thinking that we there must be ways of helping with that and helping in a more discursive, honest way. We felt there was a slightly hidden agenda. It was unclear what the actual purpose was. This is a touchstone for officers to prepare what they were looking for and to open up for ideas, but it felt as if they are testing out an idea that was already there. And a lot of funded organizations, I'm just reflecting some of the things I've heard, felt that they should turn up because it's in our interest to turn up, not only because we care about Basingstoke, but because this is one of our main supporters who we wanted to um, continue to be supported by. So that it, it's a diff some difficult mixed agendas in there, as you'll appreciate. Um, we welcome the opportunity, really, to, to contribute more in a more open, discursive way, and wondered if there's a way beyond these quick-fire workshops, which are useful as part of a process, but there have been diminishing attendances as people have been frustrated by the processes. More and more, you know, officers and members there than there are people from cultural organizations each time, and I think that's a sign. So is there a way of improving on this 
and making it better for the future so that we can all share our agendas openly and shape the best for cultural provision for the borough from here because I think we're all trying to do the same thing and we're keen to work together in the best way we can but this process has been of limited use from many cultural organisations point of view so far. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairman, yes, absolutely. Um, but I, I can honestly say, uh, as portfolio holder, that I'm not aware, aware of any hidden agendas. And I, and, I, and I just would like to just redress the balance somewhat here. When you, when you look at the feedback and the, and the high scoring we've had that's in the paper, and, and, I, and, I, and I think I, I do hear what uh, uh, Jane Ridder uh, said, but I, I don't think she actually attended a, 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 a cult meeting. So she speaks with remarkable authority on on the failings and shortcomings of, of the cogs, but but didn't actually attend one. Um, now, uh, maybe she was not able to, to to attend, and I'm sure she had representatives there. But I just think um, let's let's get a bit of let's get a bit of perspective on things. What we'll do with the